If you're the person who always says, hey, I always miss out on airdrops, well, the question is, did you do anything about it to get it? In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys a couple of things you guys can do in order to obtain the ZK Sync airdrop if and when it does come up, not financial advice, of course. I'll show you guys a couple of tweets so you guys can see the proof that there is probably most likely will be a token. And just to determine if this type of airdrop farming or airdrop hunting is worth it, well, take a look at the Optimism airdrop. The Optimism airdrop, they airdropped over $30 million worth of OP tokens to any of the community members that simply just made a couple swaps, bridged onto the chain, played around and used the chain a bit. And the same goes for Arbitrum. If you receive the Arbitrum airdrop, the Arbitrum airdrop at its peak and if you got the maximum amount was about $15,000 per wallet. Then you also had other airdrops like Aptos and whatnot, but let's go and talk about ZK Sync. Here's a tweet they just posted today on ZK Sync, Sync's Twitter profile. Take a look at this tweet and take a read into it. You can see here that their ultimate focus is resilience through decentralization and community ownership. So far, the main way of creating community ownership is through a token. And this is directly on the ZK Sync website. You can see here we stand for trustlessness, security, resilience, forkability, as well as community ownership. Again, community ownership needs a token. Also, if you take a look at the top chains on DeFi Llama, you can see you got Ethereum, Tron, Binance Smart Chain, Arbitrum, Polygon, all of these ranked by the top TVL. ZK Sync is number 16 with one of the ones that just doesn't have a token. Bitcoin has a token. And basically this is just Lightning Network. You got DeFi Chain, same junk, different day. You got Kava, Kava's got a token. Phantom, FTM token, Solana, Pulse. All of these already have a token, but ZK Sync era does not have a token yet. It has over $160 million in TVL. Of course, they want to decentralize the protocol. Anyways, let's go and get into this step-by-step -step guide and show you guys how you can potentially qualify for the ZK Sync airdrop. As you can see here, there is a bridge button right here. It's probably a good idea to do this. Now, if you guys don't want to mess with Ethereum gas fees, that's fine. That's entirely up to you what you want to do. But I would definitely recommend bridging in a little bit of funds from Ethereum mainnet into ZK Sync. As you can see, I already did a little bit to ZK Sync era mainnet. So I'm not gonna mess with that, but the fee is about $7. I'll show you guys what this will look like so you guys can see how the fees show up on a Mainer mask so you guys can make the decision on what you guys want to do. As you can see here, it's gonna cost actually about $3 in gas. So not too shabby, and that's because it's about 18 GUI. So let's go ahead and close that. Now, if you don't want to use the main ZK Sync bridge, that's fine. You can use Orbiter Finance or you can use Layer Swap. Both of these will potentially be in the qualifications for the airdrop. So whether you do them in the beginning, I would recommend messing around with each of the bridges and actually making some of the different transactions. And I'll leave the links in the description below for all of this stuff. And if you guys like airdrop content like this and you want to see what I'm doing in the markets, you guys can jump in the Discord. The link's in the description below. It is the Patreon link. Basically show some stuff that I don't show on YouTube and you can chat with a bunch of other DeFi DGENs just like you. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of other dApps. I've went through a lot of Twitter threads. I've done a couple of these steps myself. And I've also looked at the different dApps and this is just a list that I've compiled in order to make you most eligible for getting the airdrop. Next, after we bridge, we want to do the easiest and simple step. This is to provide liquidity on SyncSwap. Now, I haven't provided liquidity yet in this wallet. I've done it in a couple of other wallets. Yes, when you airdrop farm, not financial advice, but use a couple of different wallets. It actually helped on the Arbitrum airdrop for me. It actually helped qualify three different wallets. So this is something that I would recommend doing is using different wallets. I'm just gonna do one for the sake of this video because it would be annoying to do three different uh, wallets in one video and it's just like, what the snap, why am I doing that? So what I'm going to do is obviously I'm gonna make a couple transactions, a couple of swaps. The transactions are pretty fast and it's really not too expensive. So I'm just gonna swap 0.01 ETH to some BTC 
and we're gonna go ahead and make this swap. And we'll go ahead and confirm this into the wallet and we will add liquidity for the pool. So you can see here, after you make the transaction, you actually get gas refunds and whatnot. So it's really not that bad. Um, the fees seem a bit high at first when you're making the transaction. I'll show it to you guys and then I'll show you the finalized transaction. But let me go ahead and deposit some Bitcoin and ETH into this. So I'll just do max, actually, I don't wanna do max ETH. I don't know why. Oh, that's why. Add tokens and balance proportion. You can also just do this once, but again, I'm trying to make additional transactions so that it's kind of like, oh snap, this guy is pretty active type of thing. So let's go ahead and sign and submit on this. This is literally just a sign for it. The deposit is going to be the fee transaction. But basically what I would do is if you're doing all these different transactions is look to do a couple of them uh, every week or every other week or so. This is the initial fee, $1.49, and I'll show you what the completed fee is. But again, like I said, I would do this every other week. So maybe every like two weeks, come back, do some transactions, do some on SyncSwap, uh, do some on Velocor, mint an NFT, buy an NFT, just play around with it a bit. So I got my pool tokens, I'm deposited. This is my position. I'm going to be earning fees as people are trading. So have fun, enjoy, whatever, go trade against my tokens. Next, we're gonna go ahead and look at on-chain trade. Now, on-chain trade is like a derivative protocol. Um, it's kind of like a GMX and whatnot. But if you want to swap some stable coins to get the OSD token, you can simply do this directly in their DAP. You hit OSD and say, hey, I want to swap uh, one USD into this. And then you get the OSD token. This is kind of like GMX, whatever. You're going to get the OSD. And then you're going to be earning these yields. One of them is going to be paid in the OSD token and the OT token. The on-chain trade, uh, on trade token is similar to like GMX, whatever, and then you'll get some earnings for that. I would recommend staking and depositing into there. Next, you wanna go long and short on a position. So I hate leverage trading, I hate messing with this, but I don't know, I, I wouldn't do 60X. I would be the guy who does 1X leverage, and uh, I don't know, uh, just do it with some stable coins and mess around with it. Make a couple of transactions and mess around with on-chain trade. Next is to mint an NFT. This is alpha eggs. Uh, one is lonely, two is a couple, four is a quad, six is... How about I get three? Uh, three is a triplet. <laughs> um, so I'll just go ahead and mint three of these. Sign, submit, confirm, and we'll grab some alpha eggs. Uh, cool, I got some alpha eggs, successfully minted. All right, so next, let's go ahead and go to Velocore. Now, Velocore, this is a VE33 DEX. All you would do is make a couple of swaps, play around with this, provide liquidity. Um, me personally, if you are looking to say risk off and you're bridging a little more funds on ZK Sync Chain, I would recommend doing that for one of the wallets. That way you can have a wallet that gets airdropped in size, uh, especially if they go on monetary values. I would do one and do it with one of the stablecoin pools or with a, a pair like USDC and ETH. And you would simply deposit into this. Now, making the swaps, it's pretty easy. It's literally just like a Uniswap swapper. So just like 0.01 ETH and swap it for some, I don't know, let's just call it USDC. And then you simply just make the swap. And yeah, it's just gonna give you guys this warning and yada, 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 whatever. You guys get the point. And then you would go ahead and come over here and go to the USDC pool and you would provide liquidity. It's gonna pay a 13% APR in the Velocore token. So you're not going to be getting swap fees. Keep that in mind, this is a VE33 DEX. So you're only going to get paid in the Velocore token and that will show up in the rewards section over here. Next, you would go to ERA Lend. Now, I wouldn't recommend lending out and depositing a bunch into this protocol. This looks like a newer protocol. Um, so be careful when you're uh, depositing large sums of money and using uh, some of these things. Again, we're, we're trying to make a bunch of transactions uh, and we're going to do this weekly or at least every other week to seem like we're quote unquote active and we're not uh, blacklisted or seen as like, oh, this dude's an airdrop farmer. Um, of course, they're gonna watch this video and blacklist me. But yeah, um, oh, I gotta connect my wallet. So go ahead and provide a little bit of tokens on this. Of course, this one doesn't do Rabby, but for the sake of this video, you would do MetaMask and swap in and just mess around with that. 
All you do is supply some tokens, and then once you have tokens uh, deposited, go ahead and borrow from it. Next is Maverick. Maverick is a optimized uh, uni v3 type of thing. So basically what they do is uh, they manage your LP position to reduce the risk of impermanent loss. You can actually go directly on to um, app.mav.xyz and you can actually, actually it's not app, it's mav.xyz and you can actually learn more about their protocol and how it works and how concentrated liquidity works. But make sure you at least test it with a little bit of tokens to mess around with it. Um, you can actually skew your pool to be in a bullish scenario. You can do it in a bearish scenario. You can do it to where you're like, hey, this is going to be sideways action. You can choose the uh, skew that you want it to have. So if you're kind of um, feeling bearish on the market, but you want to earn swap fees, you can choose to uh, deposit your position to be in a bearish scenario. So let's do some, well, first I got to connect my wallet. And we're going to do some ETH tokens and USDC to show you guys what this looks like. These guys are good, they got Rabby. So we'll do some ETH and then select some USDC. USDC and just call it uh, 0 0.01 and then you go ahead and make the deposit. Right now we're just kind of like waiting around like what the snap is going on and it's powered by Maverick AMM. <laughs> so as you can see here, we're on Maverick AMM, whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and make a swap so we can get some USDC tokens and provide liquidity. If you're doing this with a little more funds, that would probably be, be something better to do, especially with all these gas fees. I mean, these videos, waste of gas fees, man. But whatever, it is it is what it is. So we're gonna get some USDC and ETH and we're going to deploy in a pool. So let's go ahead and create a new pool and we're going to do this for USDC and we're going to do this for ETH. I'm going to select, uh, choose fee and width. I'm going to say, let's see what everyone else has done. 51% do a 0.1% and a 2% width. And it also kind of shares the fees that it gets. This actually isn't that bad. Um, 25% probably is going to have a lot of impermanent loss, but I got to tiny amount in there so we'll see what happens yeah you can kind of see where most of the liquidity is at this is like trader joe you can basically see here that the average range or at least where it's at right now is about 1700 eth and this one is about i don't know 2k eth and this one down here is about 1500 eth yeah that's an all right range that's not too bad so that would be about two percent width and let's just say next so i'm going to Mode static, mode drag, what am I, bearish, bullish? I'm static, I, I think we're just gonna be chopping in this range. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do in this range, mode static, so hit next. And it's going to ask for the amount, and let's just say the maximum amount. We're gonna approve USDC, and we're going to deposit into the pool. You don't have to approve ETH, because contracts by default, uh, do the ETH, whatever. Um, but let's go ahead and deposit into this and make a transaction. And you can see the gas fee was like $3.15. Uh, let's show you guys what it actually came out to be. Oh yeah, so a refund of 0 0.0027. So yeah, that wasn't bad. So then you can go ahead and see your positions, see what they look like. You can go to the boosted positions. But refresh, my earnings roasted. I got nothing. My balance is 15 bucks. I wasted like two of it, three of it in gas fees. <laughs> Yay, I'm starting to earn some fees. I got less than a penny. Good job, Drake. Next, what we want to do is simply buy a cheap NFT or a NFT collection that you're bullish on. Um, me personally, I actually like the ZK Amirai. This is a collection from Lynn on Twitter. Um, I don't know. That, that's entirely up to you what you want to do. It's a little more expensive than a regular NFT. And if you don't want to shell out something like that, look at something like Funky Land. Uh, you can get yeah, it's a, it looks like one of those eggs we just minted. But here's some ZK seeds, whatever. We'll get one of these rotten seeds and then just hit buy and go with it. This is the other marketplace. This is actually Mint Square. I wouldn't recommend messing around and using this too much. They said they're actually going to be closing up shop at the end of the month. So yeah, I'm not bullish on them. Um, <laughs> so forget it, I'm not using them. And lastly, what you want to do is get a ZNF's domain because why not? Um, I already got the you get nothing dot 
It actually was just you get nothing. But yeah, I already got this one. So this is, yeah, I got you get nothing. And it's pretty cheap to register. So let's just pick a random one. Uh, of course, I would type in one of those. So let's type in that and then we'll search and then just show you guys the cost. It's 0 0.0023. So relatively cheap and you get lifetime ownership and whatever and people can send transactions there if they want, whatever. So yeah, if you want to send ETH to you get nothing dot uh, ZK sync, uh, have fun. Um, you're, there's going to be nothing there. So don't do it. <laughs> So lastly, when you're wanting to get out or bridge out, whatever, uh, I would recommend messing around with some of these other bridges like Symbiosis and LayerSwap. Uh, it will just probably increase your eligibility for the airdrop. And again, it will make some more transactions on the chain. So guys, that is it for the airdrop tutorial for ZK Sync. We showed you guys how to make some swaps, how to mint an NFT, make some bridges, provide liquidity, just mess around on the chain. If you guys enjoy this type of content, drop me a like, subscribe to the channel, and tell me what you guys think of this. I'll leave all the links in the description below so you have the step-by-step -step airdrop guide and so you guys know what to do. And if you guys want to jump in the Discord, the link is in the description below. It is the Patreon link. Also, if you guys are following me on Twitter, I do plan on stealth launching a NFT collection that kind of represents the brand of the channel. Uh, I've been doing this channel for almost four years now, and I just want to uh, be able to engage the community more and be able to um, allow the community to feel like they can rally behind something. And for the NFTs themselves, yes, there will be gas fees and a tiny little fee to prevent people from just minting all of them, as well as limits on the amount um, each wallet can get. But if you guys are a viewer and on that tweet I will share, you guys can drop your wallet address in it and I will whitelist your address so you can literally get the NFT for free. Now, of course, you still have the mint cost, but if that's something you'll be interested in, just make sure to follow me on Twitter and be looking out for that stealth launch tweet. Let's hit you guys with that wisdom one-liner. We're gonna go with Proverbs chapter 15, verses one. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but harsh words stir up anger. Be good, be righteous. Peace. Of course, I almost forgot. If you guys are unfamiliar, there actually is a ZK Sync Lite. This was the very early days on the ZK Syncer. If you guys want to get on ZK Sync Lite, you can actually bridge over from ZK Sync Era to ZK Sync Lite. I would recommend doing this because you're going to be using another bridge, which is Layer Swap. So use Layer Swap, mess around with this, bridge over, get onto ZK Sync Lite and then use zigzag exchange. As you can see here, I grabbed a couple of zigzag token because why not? And I also made a trade. You can also find the bridge over on zigzag exchange bridge. If you want to bridge from ZK Sync Lite from mainnet ETH, you can do that as well. Entirely up to you. But yes, messing around with the OG ZK Sync, which is ZK Sync Lite, will probably be one of the qualifications. It's not guaranteed, but it probably will. If you remember on Arbitrum, Arbitrum Nova was one of the qualifications. It actually helped, so keep that in mind.